911 Talk Podcast, Episode 67, for Monday, January 23rd, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Bad predictions. For the most part, I think that we can all agree that it's generally a bad idea to say something can't or won't be done. In addition to inciting the multitude of industrious thinkers that exist today to even think harder, technology is changing at such a rapid pace that almost anything is possible in the future. I thought that I'd put together a list of some common bad predictions that were made in the recent past and maybe not so recent past to remind everyone that anything is possible. And when it comes to anything being something related to public safety that will save lives, there is even more possibility. With that, I offer you Fletch's list of top five bad technology predictions. Number five, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers by Thomas Watson, chairman of IBM in 1943. By the way, some have estimated that there are upwards of one in two billion computers in the world today. Number four, the Americans have made use of the telephone, but we do not. We have plenty of messenger boys by Sir William Priest, chief engineer of the British Post Office in 1876. What, you mean you're going to have somebody write a note on a piece of paper and then have somebody else deliver it for them? Number three, the wireless music box has no imaginable commercial value. Who would pay for such a message sent to nobody in particular? By opponents of David Sarnoff in response to his request for investment in the radio in the 1920s. Hey, they should have tweeted their views and opinions or put them in a podcast. Number two, this telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. That's from a Western Union internal memo in 1876. Maybe no value to you, but to six billion other people today, apparently it is. And that brings me to the number one technology prediction mistake. Unless you're under 30 years old, you will not have to be concerned about next generation 911 by a participant at the Great E911 debate in Newport, Rhode Island last year. Hey, I'm 50 and I'm worried about it now. By the way, Next Gen 911 is already here today. So as I mentioned last week, there's been far too much complexity around E911 for the enterprise. IT administrators don't necessarily understand it, and quite often they fall back on the simple approach of what is the law? But don't get wrapped up too much in what the law says in any particular state. You need to think about what level of service you need to provide to your employees under your care using your telephone system. Now, too often I see too many companies over-rotating on their e 911 solution in the enterprise. They've never had anything before. They realize they've got this huge problem now, and then they put in an architecture that sounds like it's the best or the most precise. Another common mistake is to provide a required hosted e 911 solution for the remote VPN users or work at home employees who have an IP device and then without any further thought taking that same solution and rolling it out to the entire enterprise not just externally where it's needed but internally where it may not be needed. Understanding E911 in the enterprise and defining the problem and resolution usually doesn't mean buying a particular box from a 911 vendor and then just plugging it into the network. E911 is a process that requires potential system integration, maybe some database work, and a formalized standard operating procedure that covers things like moves, ads, and changes, new employee provisioning, and the removal of stale records as employees move on. Just like there's no magic accounting box that will automatically and autonomously prepare your financial statements with no input from your bookkeeper, there's no magic E911 box that will automatically and autonomously manage your E911 parameters in the public alley databases. And quite frankly, the real amount of management that's required at that level may just surprise you. Personally, I like to break E911 down, in the enterprise at least, into three primary decision points. Localized on-site notification to internal staff. Assigned internal first responders should be aware that an E911 call took place and where in the building the caller was located. Now, this is not data that we're pushing to the PS Alley database. It's internal information for use by our own internal employees that will assist public safety in locating the caller when they arrive on site. Secondly is support for pneumatic behavior on my PBX and on my network. 
Administrators and the PBX itself need to understand where users are when they move, as well as when they enter or leave an environment, such as the case of wireless LAN devices. Finally, support for remote VPN workers on the PBX, but not on my network. As we flatten and consolidate the network and allow employees to ubiquitously work from wherever they can gain internet connection, we need to be cognizant about how we provide E911 services on new technology designed specifically for that class of user. That's where the hosted 911 solution, or VPC, comes into play. Fortunately, Enterprise 911 is just teeming with what I call snake oil salesmen that drone on about cases of misfortune and multi-million dollar lawsuits. Sure, a lot of that is valid, but most of that stems from ill-fated procedures that have never been vetted or even audited for local compliance. A new form of engagement is the E911 Risk Assessment Audit. It includes a site visit, discussion with your staff to determine your specific requirements, as well as a review of the configuration on your PBX. Now, a good risk assessment can't be done over the phone, nor can you just click a few questions on a web page and get the magic answer. It's going to take an E911 professional who understands compliance and a face-to-face -face meeting to help you determine what you're going to need. And remember, if they just come in and throw some dirt in the floor, they're probably trying to sell you a vacuum cleaner. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911.